All right, what's up, YouTubers? If you saw my unboxing video of my Pioneer AVH 2400, you would know that I'm going to be installing into this car. Now, this particular model is a 2000 Honda Accord Coupe. So I can't really say what kind of tools you need, what, what, how to take apart your dashboard, but this is just a... Basically, radio installations are almost always the same for the cars. So this is basically how it goes. Alright, so... First things first, safety is a priority. Make sure you have the batteries connected and all that. And you can go ahead and get started. I'm not going to disconnect my battery. I'm just not going to connect my um, wiring harness. So, to give me a little bit more room, I'm going to pull, pull, I'm going to shift this sleeve out of park and pull the emergency brake. Alright. And then, you want to take out your dashboard if you can, if there's a possible way. My particular model is down here with a number two Phillips screwdriver. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. So this radio is no good. Um, all it does is play radio and AM. The CD player doesn't work anymore. So I'm upgrading it. A new one can play USB and all kinds of stuff. Now, on some parts of this video, I will be fast forwarding it to make it seem a little bit faster. So, just. Um. Alright, once you got that done, you want to get a flathead screwdriver or a bit or something. This is for this particular car. Pry this clock off. Done. Now I'm not responsible for any damages once again because I've done this several times and on several occasions I've burnt out the clock bulb, the AC bulb, these three bulbs right here, it's one bulb. And so far I've burnt out just today I just burnt out the this these uh park the gear gear shower thing down here, whatever you call it. On the shifter shifter column, all the the light bulb just burned. I just bought some, bought a light bulb. This car is about thir uh, 13 years old. This is a 2000 Accord, and so these bulbs are lasting a pretty long time. So pretty, pretty much, if you just give it a little shock, they'll pretty much burn out. So I'm not responsible for any damages. Just just let you know that. All right, once you got this pop clock popped off, you can move some of these cables. I'm gonna go ahead and try to shut off my car. I right, have more enough room, so I'm gonna shut off my car. So that thing, and you, and one more screw. I forgot. There's a screw back here. Now the tools you'll need, like I said, it varies depending on your model, but um, the basic tools you need are probably like some kind of screwdriver. Um, a wiring harness that plugs into your car and a mounting kit that holds the radio that slides into the dashboard those are basically the tools you need and once you got, got that removed you can basically just lift up under here I've tried prying here all, all it does is happen to like rip this soft touch material and prying here down here is more gently because um, it doesn't just pop out so it doesn't burn out the bulbs so I'm saving you money I hope you like comment and subscribe Pull down here. All right, and it's easy as that. And then you remove these wires back here. Sorry, I can't show you. I'm trying to do this in real life time. All right, and there we go. Here's the uh, what do you call it? AC unit. Put this somewhere safe, and you can remove the radio. I'm gonna use my screwdriver again with the magnetic the magnetic tip since it is so far in. Alright, and here you go, here comes the old radio, hope you can see this, uh, I'm, I don't want to, I guess I can zoom in, I don't know, I like the wide angle view, put these screws somewhere safe. 
And I guess I'll be fast forwarding it from now on until I have something else to say. That's weird, that light's still blinking. Now it's done. I guess it was a capacitor. Alright. And you can compare the old one versus the new one. Yeah. I'm just gonna test for it and see what it looks like. I don't think it'll fit in here. That's why this is why you need the mounting kit, because this is probably not gonna fit in here. See, there's a big little gap. And the, the little faceplate that came with this radio doesn't fit in, fit in here all the way. It's really loose. It's probably not going to fit in here either. Yeah. But, um... I'll go get my wiring harness and be right back. All right, here we go. Here is our wiring harness. It's supposed to plug right into the car. And then you have your wiring that comes with the radio. And it's a matter of matching up colors. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the car. I mean, you have your basic um Honda makes it really easy to lay out. So, this is you have to buy this on yourself. You have to buy this and your mounting kit. Um so basically your power and ground um, your illumination and dimmer, um, your left front, your right front, your rear left, your rear, or your left rear, I don't know, but, um, but, um, the speakers are, it's, it's basically color-coded to, um, to match the aftermarket wiring, and Honda happens to have it in this order. And then you have your red, which is the ignition or turn on. Um, when you stick the key in and turn on your car, this is what powers it. The the yellow power earlier is the on always on power, so your reader doesn't lose its preset. And this car does have a glass antenna, so you do have to connect the power antenna. Now you don't have to connect these on most cars because um, the antenna is usually just a metal stick sticking out or something. But um, on old, very old cars with those actually power antennas that slide up, you need to connect this. And with cars that have glass antennas, you need to connect, connect this because glass antennas are very weak. So the blue is usually your power antenna based, based on the aftermarket um, wiring. So I'm not going to connect this yet to my car, but I'm, I'm going to test fit it to make sure it fits. Now I'm going to connect these wires, um, I might do it off camera so I, I will be right back. Basically what I'm going to do to connect them though before I go is I'm going to get these wires, match the colors where it's black and then I'm going to cross them. I'm going to spread the little wire out, I'm going to spread the wire out to make it like a Y shape. And I'm going to cross thread them like this and then just twist it and tie some electrical tape around them and d repeat for all these wires. So, right, so I'll be right back when I'm finished. So here I am back again after about an hour, not really an hour, maybe 45 minutes connecting all these wires together. I just twisted the wires and tied them with electrical tape. I know this is not secure but it's pretty easy to take out the radio whenever it does fail and I just don't... I just don't really have any butt connectors or anything that could connect these, so just twisting the wires and electric, electrical tape will do for now. Um, there are a few wires unconnected on the Pioneer side. The green parking wire, I'm going to connect that later. The system remote control, that's for uh, amplifier. I don't have an amplifier. And a mute. Um, something to do with if the car has a mute or something like that. I don't know but mine don't have that and on the Honda side I have I kinda lied about the blue wire earlier <laughs> I don't think it needs to be connected yet but I have a blue wire unconnected it's for the power antenna 
and an orange wire for illumination. I have the dimmer wire, the orange and white, connected, so the dimmer should work when I turn on the headlights, but so far, let's go ahead and see how it does. I forgot to tape off these. Crap. As long as it doesn't short anything out, I'm good. So, for the first time, here we go. Plug it into the radio first. Plug it into the Honda. And right now it should have power, like for the memory, the like constant 12 volts. But I'm going to go ahead and plug, turn on the key and see if it turns on. And there we go. Isn't that neat? That's really neat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get volume out of this by using the radio and I do have sound I'm gonna verify all sounds come sounds are coming from all speakers and that's what it sounds like now I'm gonna connect the antenna because I'm pretty sure it can't find any stations see if it works Sweet. I know. Um, so the antenna is okay. I remember I had a channel 950. I want to see if I can get it. Yep. Sweet. Four Seasons Floors is located at 208 South 25. That is cool. Heisberg, Mississippi, behind Bear Street. Washington Watch, thanks for joining us and being a part of the air. I want to see if the RDS works. It's a radio data system or something like that. Later. Okay. I'm going to go to 107.9. It should say Kicker 108. And there we go, yes. Kicker 108. Alright, so it works all good. Now I'm going to turn on the headlights, see if it dims. And it does. All right, so all the wires connected, everything's connected. Now, it's a matter of connecting the uh, mounting kit. This should be fun. And the parking light, the parking brake. So, um, for the parking brake, I have my car somewhat disassembled I'm gonna route this green wire down here that's gonna come up under here let's remove everything first I have this somewhat disconnected to remove this whole center console remove the dash the cup holder I actually found like five pins down here it was pretty cool you never know what you might find move this cup holder Remove this bezel. I have everything loosely popped into place, so I'm gonna uh, hmm, put these screws somewhere where I don't lose them. And lift, you're gonna lift this like this side, this side, this that's it, this side, all four corners up. And it should just pop right out. Lift the emergency brake up and try to put the car in a gear. So, so, um, and make sure you're not on a hill. Or at least if you do, put your parking brake up really high. And then step on the brake and move it down and you can lift it up. It's kind of a tight fit. Between here. Not, there we go. Put it in neutral. That's a perfect spot. Should lift it right out. And then what, what, at the end of this green wire for the parking brake is a clamp. I'm going to have to clamp this onto this green and red wire down here. 
that goes to my parking brake. Not sure if you can see that, it's a green and red wire. This wire right here goes straight to my parking brake. And after I get that connected, route it through here, I'm going to install my mounting kit. After my mounting kit, it's pretty easy, just, just take out, just um, put the radio into the mounting kit, mount the um, kit into the dash, and it's easy as that. And I'm going to update y'all when I'm done. After spinning forever, I spent literally like an hour, it's almost night time now. I finally got it connected to the parking brake wire. You see that? After taking about half my car out, this is all out of place. The dash is out of place. Holy crap. Now, I think there is a dim. I haven't tried this yet. I think there is a demo unit. A demo. A demo or something like that. I don't know. Or a system setting where the parking brake has to be on for it to work. I played with it a little bit earlier when I got it powered on. And I said parking brake needs to be turned on. Or I can just go find a DVD, but where is it? No. Oh, here's one. It works. Holy shit. I just pulled this up. Hold on, let's try that again. Where was I? Sweet. What happens if I hold this and press it? Oh, sweet, it works. See? Oh, man, that is awesome. It works. My brake, my brake light is always on if you um, don't have the car on, but if you lift it up a little bit, it turns a little bit brighter. You can't really see it turn brighter when I lift it up, but after I start my car, the brake light goes off, and it, this works now. That is awesome. I can see why some people think the bypass is easier, because you don't have to do all this shit. Look at that. This is all for my car, just to get this stupid wire working. And... I all I have to do now is plug in the mounting kit, mount it, put everything back together, and I'll update y'all when I'm finished. It'll probably be nighttime, but almost there. And here's the finished product. Man, this thing is sharp. And once again, like I said, I damn I burnt out another bulb. This this uh, AC bulb doesn't work anymore. You can't see anything. There's no light coming from it. Burnt that out. Pretty sure that is not replaceable. It's built into the screen. I've already taken this whole thing apart and looked at it. I don't think it's replaceable. But damn, this thing is sharp looking. Turn off the lights, it becomes brighter. Let me turn off all the lights. Like daytime, turn on the lights, it dims. It's not very distracting at all. Man, this thing is awesome. Every little kiss is driving me wild. Throwing little cherry bombs into my Man, this thing is sharp. And then you can go to, uh, you can go to, uh, you can see everything works system. Uh, what was it again? Video signal setting, or what was it? Oh, picture adjustment. Put on the parking brake. You can see the red light on the dash, watch it. See, it goes away. So everything works perfectly fine. This is one really sharp machine. And you can change all the colors and themes. Man, this thing is sharp. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that just awesome? Well, this is my installation of the Pioneer 2400 series in the 2000 Honda Accord Coupe. Same with the Honda Accord 6th uh, generation. And there we go. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and comment and like. Hope you find this hope you found this video helpful.